the dead are alive and the saints rejoice in complete happiness. Listen to our prayers for Audrey, your daughter, who has passed from the light of this world. May she enjoy the comfort of your light for all eternity. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Please be seated, and I invite James Fisher to proclaim the first reading. A reading from the second book of Maccabees. It is good and holy to think of the dead rising again. Judas, the ruler of Israel, then took up a collection among all his soldiers, amounting to 2,000 silver drachmas, which he sent to Jerusalem to provide for an expiatory sacrifice. In doing this, he acted in a very excellent and noble way, inasmuch as he had had the resurrection of the dead in view. For if he were not expecting the fallen to rise again, it would have been useless and foolish to pray for them in death. But if he did this with a view to the splendid reward that awaits those who had gone to rest in godliness, it was a holy and pious thought. Thus he made atonement for the dead, that they might be freed from the sin. This is the word of the Lord. Fisher for the second reading. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus 
and place us with you in his presence. Everything indeed is for you, so that the grace bestowed in abundance on one or more people may cause the thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. Therefore, we are not discouraged. Rather, although our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, as we look not to what is seen, but to what is unseen. For what is seen is transitory, but what is unseen is eternal. For we know that if our earthly dwelling, a tent, should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. When Jesus arrived at Bethany, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. The village was not far from Jerusalem, just under two miles, and many people had come out to console Martha and Mary over their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him while Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would never have died. Even now, I'm sure God will give you whatever you ask of him. Your brother will rise again, Jesus assured her. I know he will rise again, Martha replied, in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he should die, will come to life. And whoever is alive and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I have come to believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, he who is to come into the world. For our salvation, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated for just a short word.
Receive the offering we trustingly present for the soul of Audrey, your servant. 
May this sacrifice, which you ordain to be the one source of healing for all, grant her eternal salvation. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, in him the hope of resurrection has dawned. The sadness of death gives way to the bright promise of immortality. Lord, for your faithful people, life is changed, not ended. When the body of our earthly dwelling dies in death, we gain an everlasting dwelling place in heaven. And so with all the choirs of angels, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is prayer, the most sacred part of the Mass, where the gifts of bread and wine become Jesus' body and blood. Lord, you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your Spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've held us worthy to stand in your presence and to serve you humbly that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, especially our sister Audrey, whom we commend to you today. Welcome her into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, the holy martyrs and saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Together we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress and needless worry, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your holy will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Christ's peace be with you always. And with your spirit. The sign of peace. to receive Holy Communion. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not, not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We welcome everyone to this Mass of Christian Burial this morning. To receive Holy Communion, you must be a baptized Catholic and have made your First Communion.
renewed by the nourishment of this sacred gift. We pray that Audrey, our sister, freed from the bonds of this life, may rejoice to have a share in the resurrection of your son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated, and Robert Jr. will now say a few words. Thank you, first of all, Father Passanant, for that lovely homily and acknowledging Mom like you did, and Dad, too. I owe it to Mom to speak about her, because I know she would have been proud. Please excuse me if I have to pause a bit. Those of you that know my speaking style know that I don't typically read from something prepared, but today I have to. A childhood friend of mine once said, Nobody loves you like, like your mother. He was on point with that. When mom was in the hospital, they had hospital boards, uh, kind of like chalk boards in front of each patient's room, in front of their beds. And it was mostly to tell them the nurse that was on duty at that particular time. But they also had some questions that the patients would then have the nurse write down. One of them said, tell me about you. The person in the bed next to mom said, I like to read. Mom wrote, I love my son. I knew over these last couple of weeks that since my birthday was in May, she would never ever allow herself to pass during that time. It was her love for me that that did that and prevented her from passing. She would never want me to have that association. In speaking with a dear friend over these last few weeks, we've said how fortunate and lucky we were to have such wonderful parents. And I think that's what makes it so hard. Mom was the most caring, gentle, compassionate person I've ever known. She was an incredible mother who would always say that she would never, ever lie to me, and she never, ever did. She knew exactly how to handle me and had a knack for making me see things from another person's perspective based on their particular circumstances so I could better understand that person and where they're coming from. She looked out for me 24-7 and she would always ask me to call her when I would get to a particular place or destination so that she could rest knowing I got home safely. Even at the end, and especially the last week when she got so sick, many times she beat me to calling me because she hadn't heard from me yet. Mom was a person of the utmost integrity and grace, which made selecting the song you just heard during the communion, an easy pick. Mom was honest almost to a fault. When she felt that a retailer had overcharged her, she would go back and make sure that that wasn't the case. And many times that retailer would look at her in utter disbelief, not believing that someone could actually come back and not just pocket the money. But that wasn't mom. She would never ever take what wasn't hers. Mom had a very modest upbringing, which drove her to always help others, and I think always stay so humble. I remember going to our post office a couple of years ago, and I had to give my last name, and the supervisor at the time was passing by, and the supervisor remarked, you're a ballerini, you get so much charity mail. And she did. She got about an inch of mail a day, no joke and she gave to just about every single solicitation. When we would be out on the street or even driving in the car and we would see someone begging outside, mom would always ask me to give a couple of dollars on her behalf or she would do it. And sometimes I would say to her, and I would get mad sometimes saying, you know, sometimes these are scams. But she didn't care. She didn't want to risk 
leaving one legitimate person out, she wanted to give to everybody. It just made no difference to her. That was the kind of person that she was. When I would tell mom about the business dinners I would go on, sometimes she would ask me how much they cost. And she would absolutely get disgusted when she heard. And she would always say, a family could eat for a month. Mom had simple needs. She was non-materialistic. She could have shopped anywhere she wanted to, but she only shopped at Target and Dollar Tree. And she would always be happy to tell you about those purchases. Mom was incredibly devoted to her faith, and it was that faith in Christ that sustained her and made her the person she is. Just the other day, it dawned on me, she passed away on Sunday, April 7th, which was Divine Mercy Sunday, a day that was very dear to mom. Mom had a ritual of always kissing the cross before she went to bed that was affixed to the wall. This was after saying all her prayers. And she never ever forgot to do that. And even when she was sick and she had gotten into bed and she forgot to do it, she would get herself up and she would walk over there to do it. And then in the last few days when she couldn't do it, I would bring it to her and, I, and she would kiss it from the hospital bed. I can't tell you how much time mom spent praying every day and watching the 1230 Mass Monday to Friday. Yes, she prayed for herself at times, but she always prayed for her family and friends. And when she said that she was going to pray for you, she meant it. It was not a line. When mom got her diagnosis about a month ago, she first said to me, this is the first time that infant Jesus at Prague had failed me. But then she thought about it for a little while. And a few minutes later, she said, no, he didn't fail me. He kept me incredibly composed and calm throughout this whole dire diagnosis. Mom, I cannot tell you how remarkable she was in being able to, to take that. And it was her faith in Christ that sustained her with that. And I kid you not, after that doctor's visit, we went to Target. At one time, mom never liked to tell people about her age, but as she got into her 80s and certainly her 90s, she didn't feel that way anymore and became proud of being so active and vibrant into such a late stage in life. We should all be so lucky, and I think most of us would buy into that even if it got us into our 80s. Mom said everyone should go sometime, must go sometime, but the real tragedy is going 20, 30, 40 years prior. 94 is not a tragedy. I take great comfort in the fact that mom died peacefully in her sleep, as she always told me that she hoped to. And I take the most comfort that she's with dad, her soulmate. As Father Passanen said, when we would come to Mass every Saturday at 5 o'clock, we would sit over there because Dad's votive candle is over there. And every night, either before or after the Mass, Mom would get up. She'd hop up on that one step, which got increasingly harder every couple of weeks. And she would place her hand over the candle and pray almost as if she was holding hands with dad. About 15 years ago, I had one boss in my entire career that I never agreed with. But he said one thing that always stuck with me. And he said that there's no worse feeling than when your mom dies. I agree with him about that. Thank you, Robert. A very good son, and I will attest to that. All these years I saw your mother, I never thought she shopped at Target, believe me. She carried herself very well. Let us pray.
he's cooled down and that there's new ones there to put in the table. Okay. 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 Okay.